Hi everyone! Magandang araw po muli sa inyong lahat at welcome back sa ating channel uh, kung saan sabay-sabay po natin matutunan at tuklasin kung ano po yung mga epektibong paraan at measures para makatulong po tayo sa ating pandemic management. So, ito po ang continuation ng ating series 6 na kung saan ina-explore po natin ang systematic approach and continual process improvement for pandemic management whereby we're going to discuss part 2 na kung saan ay ang topic ay ang uh, proper or the topic proper itself will discuss proposed systematic approach for pandemic management. Muli ako po si Rita Santilaga Nicodemus, isang industrial engineer and research innovation and technology advocate. Like usual, just sharing to you our disclaimer since that COVID-19 pandemic is an evolving situation, I still encourage each and every one of us to still get the most latest updates and news from credible sources such as Department of Health, World Health Organization, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and NIH for Research Materials, or National Institutes of Health. So, sa kabuuan ng ating sharing session ngayon, ito po ang ating outline first. We're going to discuss the overview of our proposed systematic approach. Next is we will we are going to have a little bit review of input process output model for our pandemic management and because this is our starting point and then um what's the essence of continual process improvement and how will it help the overall process of pandemic management? And then next, we will discuss the timeline and when this will end. That's very important. And how am I going to explain the systematic approach for pandemic management cycle? And I'm going to share to you the slide concept or the slide model. So slide, so para sa playground, slide na padulasan. Ayan. Whereby, uh, may ihalin tulad natin ito sa isang part ng ating curve. So, hindi lang natin siya if a flat, okay, over time, we need to glide and to slide. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. Then again, uh, as usual, sa ating mga sharing session, I would like to start by quoting some of uh, quality quotes. Again, or for this case, I want to highlight a systematic way of thinking, or in this case, thinking systematically. Whereby, system thinking uses habits, tools, and concepts to develop an understanding of the interdependent nature of complex systems. When people have a better understanding of systems, they are they are better able to identify actions that lead to desired outcomes. So then, was adding last topic whereby we discuss what is a process and what is the input process input process output model, right? So, you pandemic management minubukuyan ng maliliit at malalaking processes. So, we're in this case, ito na yung tinatawag na complex systems. At a systematic way of thinking will really help for us to rationalize what we really need, what are our problems, and what are our objectives. Nang sa gayon, may isip natin o ma makapag-go through tayo ng thought process Okay, para malay natin yung mga plano. Yung plano na hindi masyadong magastos o yung plano na pinag-aralan ang timeline, ang mga plano na pinag-aralan yung mga resources available and mga plano na pinag-aralan yung iba't ibang constraints and yung iba't ibang environment condition. Kasama na rin yan ang social and economic impact ng sitwasyon. Ang ultimo ultimate goal po natin ay ma-achieve po natin ang ating tinatamasa na output o outcome. At the end of the day, ano po ba yung gusto nating matamasa kapag natapos na ang ating crisis? 
So, review lamang po tungkol doon sa quality management na diniscuss sa part 1 last week. So, total quali- uh, quality management, it focuses on service quality, customer satisfaction, whereby we need to integrate these concepts or these main processes or main components such as the total, the totality, the quality, and the management. So this is an integrated system. Okay, from our last topic, um, I gave an example of hand washing, whereby uh, we have input process and output from an old process, and then after we implement quality management, right, we were able to propose a, an improved process where we can now do a proper hand washing for 20 seconds. So last, last uh, session, we also discussed the, the overview of input process output uh, and how we can relate it into our pandemic management, right? So then again, a little bit of review, input is basically your problems, and then at the end of the day, you have these problems, you have pool of problems. So regardless, you have one, two, five, ten problems, right? At the end of the day, you want to achieve an output or outputs, desired outcome, right? And you have to go through process. Okay, katulad din ng uh, share nat. And last week, so itong input and process ay medyo um, related sila, correlated sila in, in a way in, um, ng reliability and accuracy ng information or the way we're going to process those input, right? So, let's test. Say, for example, kung meron tayong mali okay, sa ating input, which is the source of problems or pool of problems, no matter how we process it well, ang output nito, manamang may mali pa rin. Ganun din naman sa kahit anong accuracy or reliability ng ating inputs whereby sources ng problems, pool of problems, list of problems, kung may mali po sa ating processes or mega processes, process control process and process enablers, malamang magkakaroon pa rin po ng discrepancy ang ating desired outputs. So, mahalaga na ino-audit po natin ang reliability, accuracy, and is, is that factual? Are these factual information? So, mahalaga po yan para mas accurate po yung pag-achieve natin sa ating outcome or output. Okay, so ito po yung ating pinaka-process at pandemic management, right? While we have a moving target over time. So, we will discuss further. So, ito na po yung sinasabi ko na step-by-step. Uh, step. Palalim na po ng palalim yung ating pagpatalakay. Okay. So, in this slide naman, so kung makikita nyo, may mga ibang um, input na kayong makikita dyan kung saan meron na tayong timeline and then meron na rin po tayo ditong ultimate goals. At the end of the day, ito po yung ina-achieve natin. No? So, at the end of our sharing session, this is what we're going to understand and I intend to share to you guys what is our timeline and how are we going to set our goal. Yan. So, isa-isa. First is yung timeline. Okay? So, meron nga tayong input, process, and then output. Right? So, over time, meron po tayong moving target. So, nagbabago-bago po yan in, in case of pandemic management or pandemic crisis management. Uh, lalo na po, depende po sa isang bansa, yung transmission, the situation, environmental condition, the society itself, the culture, yun, nagkakaiba-iba po yun. So, ang outcome po uh, ng galaw ng ating pandemic ay depende po yan sa pagkakaiba-iba ng ating settings. Pero, iisa lang po ang ating timeline. So, sa bawat pandemic, meron po yung beginning at may ending po yan. Okay? So, dito sa case natin, uh, ma-assure po natin na matatapos ang lahat kapag lumabas na ang cure. Okay? Ang cure kung saan na mapaprotection ng tayo, so yun yung immunization, at kung ikaw man ay infected, ikaw ay siguradong gagaling at hindi lang gumaling tayo. 
dahil sa treatment. Ayan, so mas mabisa at mas assured ang pagdaling kapag lumabas na ang cure. So ngayon, sa mga research studies and other sources, ayan, clinical study sources available at available po yan sa NIH and sa WHO, ang uh, availability ng vaccine ay hindi agaran. Okay. Ang estimated timeline po nito ay from 12 to 18 months. Yan. At kapag na-achieve po natin yung 18 months, kailangan po nito ng mass testing. Pero lahat po ng scientists at lahat po ng mga bansa sa mundo, dito na po nila binubuhos ang kanilang sources at yan ay ma-invest yan sa pag-develop ng vaccine at mag-cure para sa ating COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so sa ating timeline, meron nga tayong beginning and end. So, ito po yun sa ating, in any pandemic, ito po yung stages na tinatalakay or ang timeline. So, regardless if it is SARS, COVID-19, or MERS. Okay, so phase 1 to 3, it will cover predominantly animal infections and a few human infections. Okay, so this is a very early stage of our pandemic crisis period. Where, where phase four covers sustained human to human transmission. It's either locally, um, where, you, where you're going to have an outbreak. So, ito ngayon ang yari, yung pinaka epicenter na outbreak sa buong mundo ay mula sa Wuhan, China. Yan, Wuhan, Hubei province in China. And then, because nangyari yon sa perfect timing na Chinese New Year, so naglabasan, no, and export yung mga cases sa mga karating bansa. At ngayon nga, marami na nga uh, na bansa sa mundo ang apektado ng pandemic na ito. Kaya nga naging pandemic na siya. Okay? And then, from then, kung nagkaroon na ng widespread human infection, ito na yung pinatawag na pandemic whereby many countries are affected globally. Right, yan. So, ang peak ng ating pandemic or widespread human infection, so meron po yung mga calculation na available po sa WHO and CDC. So, depende po yan sa infection rate. At meron po yung calculation, depende po sa population ng isang batsa. At sa performance ng healthcare system, pwede po natin ma-forecast ang maximum peak yan, ng infection. And then from there, from our infection, ma pwede natin ma-identify o ma-distinguish ang ating death rate as well, forecasted and projected. So napakahalaga ng ating raw data para magkaroon ng forecasting, which tatalakagay po natin yan sa mga futures uh, series po natin. Then the next to our phase 5 and phase uh, phase 6 is the post-peak. Kung saan, na, when, pag nahit mo na ang tantamount o ang pinakil, okay, yung pinaka tarik at maximum infection quantity or numbers mo. Siyempre, ang gagawin niya ng gobyerno, ga, sa, regardless of any country, lahat ng mga stringent and strict measures okay, para mapababa ito. Okay? So, kapag bumaba na, yun na yung post-peak. Yan, kapag bumababa na yung mga kaso. Kaya lang, habang wala ka pong bakuna or cure, okay, may posibilidad po na tumaas po yung toilet. Pero syempre, inaasahan, inaasahan natin na hindi na kasing marami kumpara doon sa pinaka-peak mo. Okay? So yun yung pinakamataas na quantity for daily cases. Okay. And yung post-pandemic naman, ito na yung disease activity at a seasonal level. So talagang bumababa siya. So yung learning curve, yung mga tao aware na kung paano i-handle ang situation. Yan. Okay. So katulad nga ng nasabi ko po earlier, so wala pa pong cure or vaccine na makakapag-immunize po sa atin laban sa COVID-19. So ngayon, kung nandito po tayo sa phase 5 to 6, hindi pa po talaga natin makukonclude kung ma-achieve na natin yung post-peak. Kasi over time po pwedeng bumaba tapos tataas ulit. Hoping naman na hindi siya kasing taas ng pinakamataas na recorded daily case ng isang bansa. Siyempre, yan nga yung kailangan natin masolusyonan at ma-identify natin ang lahat mga kailangan methods, processes, principles, and resources para hindi na tumaas pa ang ating uh, number of cases every day. Yan. 
hindi po yung accumulated, kundi yung daily new cases. Regardless po yan kung death or new cases. Kasi po yung death ay nakadepende po yan sa new cases. Yan, syempre, ang gusto natin pataasin is yung recoveries. Yan. Okay. Yan po ang ating timeline. We proceed in the next slide. So ngayon, sa ating input, process, and then output over time, meron po tayong ultimate goals. At the end of the day, ito po yung tinatawag natin bullseye. Dito lang po tayo magfo-focus. Kasi kung uh, madidistract po tayo, may hirapan po tayong alamin kung ano po ba talaga yung kailangan natin. Kung ano po ba yung problema na kailangan ina-address natin o rinaprioritize natin. Kasi meron tayong ultimate goal na kailangan ma-achieve. Okay? So, ito po, pinag-iisipan, uh, tinatalakay po ito ng uh, mga individual, uh, ng mga planners, leaders, policy makers. In this case, this is just a proposal. So, lahat po ng dito ay limited lamang po yan um, sa aking suggestion. At the end of the day, pwede nyo po itong gawin, gamitin itong model nito at pwede nyo palitan yan yung sources of problems, uh, processes. Ito na po yung pinaka-template. Ayan, so, uh, magkakaroon po tayo ng sharing session kung paano po gamitin yung mga processes na ito para ma-achieve yung inyong mga desired outputs. Okay, yung desired outputs na yan, ito nga yung ating ultimate goals, right? So, ayan, zinom in ko na po siya dito para hindi po tayo mahirapan. So, at the end of the day, ang katuturan at ang kahalagahan ng lahat ng ginagawa natin, pagod, hirap, frontliners, budget, resources, build, 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 plant, 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 so, social amelioration, healthcare, strengthening and enhancing our healthcare um, system and capacity, ay syempre merong goals. Kung hindi malinaw ang inyong goal, medyo malamu rin ang mga resources na kailangan nyo. So, parang mga nga pa, which is hindi siya productive kasi time-consuming siya. So, kung ang bawat isa ay, yan, mag-uusap-usap muna at ilalatag ano ba yung kailangan natin, gusto natin mangyari. Tapos lahat, bawat isa, yun lang yung goal at yung tatahakin na uh, direksyon ay mas madali na maipapatupad ang mga proseso, guidelines, at measures. So, in this case, yung desired outcomes, ito po ay, then again, ito lang po yung aking suggest that pwede nyo po itong baguhin kapag kayo na po yung gumawa ng template. Right? Number one, control the spread of the virus locally and in the whole archipelago by right. So, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, makontrol yung spread. Next, minimize serious illnesses. So, syempre, um, alam na natin, alam naman natin na madaling ipasa talaga itong uh, virus na ito. Kung hindi po talaga natin talaga siya totally na makontrol, makontain, at least mababa, mapababa. Ayan. Ito po muna yung initial goals natin. Pag na-achieve natin to pwede natin itong i-review. Okay? So, yun, yun, po, yun po yung kagandahan. I-review natin yan. Babaguhin ulit natin yung inputs, yung process natin. I-go through natin kung ano yung mga processes, relevant process na kailangan para ma-achieve ulit yung panibagong set of goals. Yun yung kagandahan ng ating continual process, uh, continual improvement process journey. Next goal is to minimize overall deaths. Yan, kung hindi man natin ma-eliminate sa zero ngayon yung death which is very impossible, at least ma-minimize natin um, eventually. And then, in the long run, kailangan ma-minimize, mapababa, mapababa, mapaba, hanggang maging zero. Wala na pong mamamatay sa sakit na ito. Kaya po yan. Medyo mahirap, pero posible po. So, COVID-19 is a solvable case. Okay, next is, we need to maximize our recoveries. Okay, so kung meron may may na magkakaroon na maka-acquire or may infect nitong COVID-19, kailangan natin ma-enhance ang ating healthcare system. Isa-isa po yan, aaralin natin ang pinaka-cost-effective na paraan para ma-maximize ang ating mga recoveries ng ating pasyente. Siyempre, pag mas maraming nakaka-recover, mas konti lang yung mamamatay. Okay? At lahat ng ito, ma-achieve natin at minimal social and economic impact. 
Okay, so kailangan pa rin i-review pa rin natin yung rational ng uh, social health okay, natin at then yung economic health. Kasi um, kung natapos na natin itong pandemic crisis na to, ay sana maiwasan natin ang maglagay sa isa pang crisis o kung saan ang social and economic crisis. So ito din po yung mga isang outcome or isa sa mga pwede natin i-consider na outcome no, para maiwasan. Prevention is better than cure. Okay? So I need to move my video here. Okay, so next slide. Ano naman makakatulong yung continual process improvement? Kung may mapapansin kayo, pagkakaiba sa ating previous slide, di ba? Okay, meron tayong input, process, output. Okay, and then meron tayong timeline. Uh, dahil wala pa nga vaccine o wala pa nga cure sa ating um, infection na ito or COVID-19 disease, right? Kailangan natin ulit-ulitin yung process na ito. May panibagong problema, okay? Ano yung kailangan natin ma-achieve sa problema nito? Okay, ano yung process na kailangan? Okay, na-achieve natin, na-achieve ba natin? Hindi, ulit-ulit. So on and so forth. Okay? So, hanggang sa ma-achieve natin yung desired outcome natin. Okay, so yan yung tinatawag na continual or continuous. Tuloy-tuloy. Tuloy-tuloy. Walang titigil. Okay? Hindi titigil hanggat hindi pa lumalabas ang cure at vaccine. Input process, output. Input process, output. Right input, right process. And then you will achieve your output. Diba? Continual process improvement over time. Okay. At sigurado po, garantisado, mafa-flatten natin ang ating curve. Okay? So, ito pong continual process improvement. Ito po yung mega concepts. Mega kasi, meron pa po tayong uh, micro processes dito, small processes, and group of processes which consist a system. Okay? At itong mga concepts dito ay mauulit ulit doon sa mga system na napapaloob sa ating total quality management principles. Okay? So, ang mga related concepts sa ating continual process improvement, okay, tinatawag ko yung mega concepts kasi may mga mini concepts yan na mapapaloob doon sa ating total quality management principles sa ating mega processes. Yeah, number one is yung Kaizen. Okay, Kaizen, at i-discuss natin yan in our future sharing session. And then yung Lean Six Sigma. Okay, so Lean Six Sigma is a combination of Lean Concept and Six Sigma Concept for effective problem solving. And then of course, the very basic PDCA or Plan, Do, Check, and Act Concept. Okay, so yun na po yung mga susunod nating mga topic. Nahihimay-himay po natin yung total quality management principle na napapaloob dito sa ating wheel. Ayan. At ang ating continual process improvement mega concepts. Okay? Na Kaizen, Lean Six Sigma, and PDCA. Plan, do, check, and act. So, kukulitahin po natin ang lahat ng mga tools. Okay? Hindi po yung martilyo screwdriver, kundi yan po yung mga quality tools na pwede nyo pong gamitin para mas effective nyo po ma-process ang mga information at data at ma-achieve ang inyong mga outcome, desired output or outcome. Okay? So, habang wala pa nga pong cure, which is yun yung mag-dictate na, okay, end game, end game na. Dere-derecho po tayo, continuously, nag improve continuously, nare-review, continuously, Chine-check, effective ba, or kailangan may baguhin, may baguhin sa input, sa process ba, kailangan may baguhin. Ayan, pero kung hanggat sa walang nalalatan ng ganito, para tayo nang nangapa sa dilim. Okay, para natin hinahanap yung karayong sa malaking talahiban. Okay, so ito, systematic way. Okay, so ito po yung aking favorite model. Ayan, it took me some time na para humanap ng model na para makonvey yung thoughts. Okay, na kung saan through this continual process improvement, 
over time, ano yung ma-achieve natin? Right? So, with this continual process improvement model for pandemic management, halimbawa, nandito po tayo sa peak of our pandemic. Let's say, for example, yung 444, yun po yung pinakamataas na recorded daily case sa ating bansa. That was two weeks or one week ago. Okay? Inapply na agad natin to. Okay? By right, bababa po yung ating bilang ng new cases pero hindi po agad-agad kasi meron nga po tayong 2 weeks na lead time no kasi meron nga yung incubation period yung ating virus so ma-appreciate lang natin yung efforts natin ng day 1 on 14th day or day 14 so, yan kung epektibo pa yun so epektibo nga yun so wag tayo ma-discourage so yeah this is a war between time and speed. Yeah. Okay, so we have our continual process improvement model here, and then we mounted it on our slide model, with, which will represent our curve okay, during peak pandemic period when we impose it with stricter measures, stringent measures, guidelines, and we have implemented principles, concepts mega tools and quality tools and we're going to measure the performance of our concept with the metrics such as confirmed cases death rates and recovery rates and over time makikita natin ito yung inaasahan nating um, reaction or result ng ating curve and then don't be discouraged kung may mga times na tataas siya Okay? Kasi meron tayo mga unforeseen circumstances. Ano ba yung mga unforeseen circumstances natin? Yung mga bagay na nakaligtaan natin during our pre-planning stage, planning stage. Kasi hindi naman po perfect yung plan. Kapag nagplano ka sa umpisa, yung initial planning mo. So kailangan na nire-review natin yan eh. So kapag meron nag-appear o nag-emerge na circumstances, no? cultural differences, social differences or environment factor incorporate natin agad yun sa ating pandemic management plan okay uh, para mapababa ulit and ang ating curve okay so there could be a probable surge due to unforeseen circumstances and in over time and so medyo marami yan para yung dancing ayan umaalim yan Pero hindi na ganun kataas. That, I will assure you. Okay? Hanggat sa ini-ensure natin na tama yung input, tama yung process, na-achieve natin yung outcome natin. Okay? Don't be disheartened kung hindi natin makikita agad yung resulta. Ang mahalaga meron tayo na umpisahan at meron tayong konkretong strategiya at konkretong plano. Yan. Okay? And then, um, okay? After nun, ito na nga yung post-pandemic kung saan nagkakaroon na tayo ng constant, okay, uniform na yung pagbaba at wala na nga bagong kaso. Yan, nangyayari na yan sa ibang parte ng ating bansa. Congratulations. Ibig sabihin na ka effective ng kanilang pandemic management na in-implement sa kanilang lugar. Okay? At hanggang sa ma-flat nga, hanggang sa dumating na yung cure. Okay? So, Sa next sessions po natin, tatalakayin po natin itong mga de detalye ng napakaloob dito sa ating continual process improvement or um, systematic approach or continuous process improvement model para sa ating pandemic management. Iisa-isahin po natin yan, hihimay-himayin po natin. At syempre, ang priority ay doon sa most prevalent um, challenges. Okay. References lang po. Um, I took some concepts and ideas from the book, The Quality Toolbox, 2nd edition, and definition of terms, I took it from Wikipedia, and third, um, major concepts, principles, and ideas from American Society of Quality, and then photo credits from Google and Canva. Then again, ako po si Rita, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong oras, and Stay safe and God bless us all. Thank you.